Welcome to the Life at Fenestra podcast. This is a podcast where we speak with the people, the humans behind Fenestra. We'll be speaking with the wonderful folks that make up the incredible global team here at Fenestra and what makes them unique, not just to the company, but to the world. My name is Karan and I'm the video producer for Employer Brand and I'll be your go-to guy for this podcast. We spoke with Swati, who is the COO of Universal Banking here at Fenestra. We spoke about her career spanning 20 plus years where she has led major transformational projects, working in various industry sectors, her passions outside of work. We reflected on the psychological aspects of identity, the importance of doing good work, building relationships and building trust and taking risks. I always learn something new when I talk to different folks from the organization and this was um, no different. So here's the amazing conversation that I had with Swati. Okay, welcome to Swati. Thank you for joining us on Life at Fenastra podcast. Um, Swati is the Chief Operating Officer of Universal Banking and um, you've been here for seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself? So I am Swati Parthasarthi, and as you mentioned, I'm currently um, the Chief Operating Officer at uh, Finastra for Universal Banking. Um, so our business unit basically caters to the financial sector, providing core banking solutions and digital solutions and several other ancillary solutions that come with it. Um, I've been with Finastra for seven years, based yep. out of Toronto, Canada. Yep. Uh, prior to Finastra, I actually worked with uh, quite a few organizations in different roles. Um, you know, BlackBerry, yeah. IBM, Fidelity. Yeah. So wow. done a few others. Did yeah. my own consulting as well for a bit. Nice. Um, so yeah, seven years and counting. Um, but it's never felt like being in the same organization. Right. It just is like different jobs in different companies. Yes. Um, again, with the evolution of the company and yeah. the changes and so on and so forth. Right. Um, academically, I'm an engineer. Uh, Interesting. Went on to do my master's in business uh, at University of Toronto. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about this. Normally when you say, who are you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I was listening to this podcast from Adam Grant. I don't know if you know Adam Grant. That sounds familiar, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he says that uh, psychologically, we generally tend to talk about our title yeah. or who we are yeah. in terms of what we do for a living and yeah. et cetera. But not really think about, you know, there's more to it than yeah. just work and, you know, stuff yes, like that. Yes, 100%. So a little bit more about myself yeah. is I love reading. Yep. Um, I, I read all kinds of stuff. But what really gets me is um, books that challenge my thinking. Okay. So trying to understand how human mind works. Yes. Organizational behavior and yeah. uh, teamwork and yeah. stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty intriguing for me. Um, aside from that, I carve out time um, pretty regularly, four hours a week, um, to practice dance. I'm a dancer. Okay. Uh, keeps me sane. Yeah. <laughs> sort of my lifeline. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think my favorite summertime activity is getting in some motorbike rides when I can, when the sun is bright and wow. uh, the weather is great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Why don't we start at your story so far? So, I guess, what's led you to this point where you are today? Like why, I guess, why are you in the position that you're in, right? What has made you want to do that? What was your motivation? And I guess, how have you come here? I'm happy to share. Um, so I've been in the industry for over 20 plus years yeah. and uh, worked across various industry sectors, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really proud about uh, my achievements and the journey so far. So again, when I think back, I started as an individual contributor mm -hmm. right after graduation out of school, yep. um, went on to um, you know handle a team, uh, basically handling some back office operations, yep. and um, it was a paralegal team, basically. Um, so that's when I was first kind of exposed to how processes and operations basically work, and mm -hmm. I was fascinated by the fact that you know having the right process, the right people, and the right systems can get you the real good outcomes. Yep. Um, so I really dove deep into that. Uh, I went on to get my Six Sigma Black Belt certification, which means <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I was I was like the process expert yeah. um, and then moved on to handle some real major transformational projects. Um, I even did the SAP implementation at BlackBerry, uh, went on to uh, handle certain other complex ones. Like I did a lighthouse of 
projects helping BlackBerry transform when they were trying to transition from the uh, hardware tool being yeah. a software business. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty intriguing, yeah. pretty intense time, but uh, you know, great Sounds a lot, it. yeah, lots of learning. Yeah. Um, and then moved to DNH, and in 2015 it was DNH. Yeah. Um, so I actually joined the finance team to help our then CFO yeah. transform the organization. Um, again, it was it was a massive undertaking, yeah. but uh, really rewarding as well. Yeah. I was um, recognized. I was a recipient of the CEO award, which was wow. really great. <laughs> um, then moved on to um, doing a divestiture of a Canadian business, um, so a little bit of the M&A side of things, yep. um, and then leading a Canadian business unit, our Czech manufacturing. Yep. Um, and now the chief operating officer. So yeah, it's been it's been uh, quite a journey, but I will say. I moved through the ranks really quickly, and uh, I attribute that to three main things, yeah. I think, in my journey. Um, one, um, do whatever it is, no matter how small the job is, yeah. do really good. Yeah. That helps to build relationships, trust, mm. and of course confidence too, because yeah. it doesn't matter what the job is, just yeah. get it done yes. really well. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is being open to change. Yeah. So being open to change, as tough as it is, because yeah. everyone would like certainty and you know yeah, yeah, the yeah. norm of life yeah. and et cetera, but yeah. uh, change does bring opportunities. Yeah. It does open doors for many other things, and it pus pushes you out of the comfort yeah. zone, but <laughs> it does open up a lot of opportunities. Of course. Yeah. So staying open and embracing change was another key thing in my journey. Um, and then I would say, last but not least, is just staying hungry for more. Yes. Um, you know, just Always. keep the flame burning. Yep. So it does push you out of the comfort zone, yep. but it helps you find the new normal, Yes. which then becomes your comfort zone. Yes, 100%. And I think I really like that, especially that last one you just said, like always, always hungry for more, because I think if we're not constantly searching for something, the next thing to do, I know we can get into a sometimes toxic cycle of, well, is the next thing to do what I really want, need to do or want to do? Thing that can often sometimes be dangerous but if we're kind of pushing ourselves and and making sure that we're doing the things that take us out of our comfort zone and i guess make us really kind of think about and 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 not criticize but critique the way we do things yeah. that in itself brings about good change sometimes of course and you know what you shouldn't be afraid to fail because that's yes. just part of the learning 100 percent. and take the risk and you get the rewards 100 percent. so i want to ask you a question so it so you kind of mentioned you were, I guess, an engineer mm -hmm. by, you know, academically. What caused that shift from engineering to finance? Like what, what, was, what was the thinking there? <laughs> well, so finance was just where I started in right. D&H. And literally at that point, I have done pretty much all facets of business, starting from, you know, training to operations yeah. to M&A to you know, strategic, um, you know, operations mm. and so on and so forth. So finance was just, you know, a business group that I was helping out with in yeah. terms of the transformation that they wanted me to lead. Yeah. Um, it, and from a process point of view, when you look at it outside in, you're yeah. really getting in, don't have to know everything because yeah. that's what you have the smart people around yeah, you yeah, for, yeah. the experts yeah. in, the, <laughs> yeah. in the group. Yeah. All you're trying to do is get to a common goal and yeah. navigate everybody towards that common goal. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Um, okay, so let me shift shift, uh, shift the gear a little bit here. Let's talk about your role. There's another question I want to ask you about you, but we'll come back to that in a second. But let's talk about kind of you know, we talked about one of your things was adapting, right? And, and being open to change. I think one of the things that I find really interesting about these conversations is that, especially people who have been here before the merger, right? How things have changed and how you've perceived them in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, you go through different people, right? You, you know, with different CFO, different CEO, all that kind of stuff. Like, how do you adapt to something like that? And how have you seen that change? And how has that affected your trajectory? Yeah, so lots of changes, yeah. just even in the time that I've been here. So when I joined, as I mentioned, it was, you know, D&H. Yeah. And we went from being a North America-centric company. Um, of course, we were going through acquisitions. Mm. So what started as a Czech manufacturing company was growing through acquisitions to kind of position itself as yeah. a software company. And then the uh, merger with Mises happened yeah. um, to form Finastro, which... Uh, 
again, I think is a fantastic pivot in yeah. the uh, organization um, history, I will say. Mm. And uh, with that comes a lot of changes, change in leadership, change in organization yeah. structure, um, the way in which we have been operating and you know managing things day to day, yeah. a lot of changes. So. I'll say in the seven years, to me personally, it feels like I've been with four different companies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what keeps it really fun and interesting. And yes, as much as the leadership and et cetera changes, I think um, it's so important for the evolution of Finastra yeah. even. Um, when we think back, when the merger happened, our first three year strategy was the mission 2021, which yeah. is basically simplify the business. Yeah. And it was crucial because you're getting two best of the companies mm. together. So how do you keep the best of the two worlds? Yeah. Um, and from there, we went on to the next three-year strategy, which was Reach Beyond. Mm. And that was all about things like, you know, let's rationalize our product portfolio. Because mm. again, it's how do we simplify and how do we bring in meaningful solutions and services and products to yeah. our customers? Um, and how do we become number one? Mm. So, you know, being a global provider, it's so crucial to kind of think of these things. Um, and uh, that becomes just part of the evolution of, of the company, of mm. the people within the company and et cetera. So yeah, embracing this change is so crucial to grow with the organization. And so I think what you said very interesting, that you mentioned the kind of the people, right? That we, there's so much that goes on. I mean, there's what almost, there's over 10,000 of us in, in this company. And I think there's so much that goes on. Like you kind of come into the office and it feels like every time I come in and you, you, there's, there's someone that I haven't met before. Yes. And it's like, well, I've been here since you know January of last year now, and it's like, well, there's always something going on. There's always someone that you that you see you've never seen before. Everybody's instrumental at something, right? And I think that's what makes this place so interestingly, so interesting for me is is seeing that that okay, well, this person is responsible for this. This is like even for yourself, you mm -hmm. know, as an example. Like I didn't even know, you know, I guess this is the first time we've met. Yes, right. Of and course. I think this that for me, it makes it so interesting, like getting to know these people from like so many different backgrounds from, from a global place. Like me and, you know, when I had this episode with Reagan, um, you know, one of the things we spoke about was when the company turned into a global organization, you introduce all sorts of people, you introduce all sorts of cultures, the way people work, all these sorts yeah. of things. And that's what makes this an interesting place to work is because like you said, every day is definitely different. Absolutely. Um, okay. So let's let's talk about. I mean, the, the, let's talk about the state of the world in terms of how the shift. I guess very specifically recently, how the shift in these global markets and even the economy. How has that impacted your role, and how has it made you, again, you know, one of your one of your facets of life, if you will, you know, be open to change? Like, how have you? How has that impacted your role? I'll put on a different lens here. Okay. I'll put on my business hat. Yeah, go on. <laughs> um, and when we talk about global shifts, I think um, I would be reminisced if I don't talk about COVID, yes. which has oh. been such a major shift in yeah. all of our lives in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, I would say from a business lens, um, it, was, it was a bit of a transformation overnight, I will mm. say, for businesses, customers, employees, mm. organizations in many, many different ways. Uh, literally, we had to think about how are we going to continue running the business, yeah. uh, cater to our customers, yeah. manage the expectation of the customers and our employees. Yep. And we didn't have a playbook. Yeah. So we had to figure it out. Yeah. And we did, yeah. which I think is fascinating. Yeah. So make the most of you know a crisis. Yes. Don't let it go waste. Yeah. Uh, but um, on the flip side, it's also about um, some of the figuring out does involve bringing in people, managing the expectations, yeah. whether be it customers, partners, or our own employees. Yeah. Uh, it was a difficult time going yeah. through COVID. And you know, at that time, I was basically um, heading up the uh, Canadian business unit, the Czech manufacturing unit. Yeah. And as you'd imagine, a manufacturing site, yeah. people have to be there yeah. on site yeah. to print the checks. Yeah. Um, so there was no working from home. Yeah. There were contractual obligations that um, you know did not allow for people to work from yeah. home. So it was being on site. Yeah amidst the thick of things yeah. and uh, being there with the team, trying to manage how we navigate through, you know, the various restrictions, yep. rules, et cetera, that we're going on. So this is fascinating how, how it all turns out. And, um, you know, being able to continue managing the performance of the team and the business and meeting the customer expectations, I think we did a splendid job there. Yep. 
Um, there are many other global shifts. I mean, day in and day out, we see many of those. I mean, most recently, we have seen in the financial sector with the SVB Bank and you know some of the uh, yes. ups and downs that we are still facing as yeah. a result of that. So there are many shifts. But then when you look at it from a business angle, I think the common, the bottom line mm. is you continue to run the business. Yeah and continue to cater to the customers and manage the employee expectations. And I think that's such a difficult thing as an organization to kind of try and address and overcome, right? Like there's there's so much thinking that goes into it. Like, okay, well, it's not just the business side of things that, that we need to address. Now it's the people. Like, how do you address the people, right? Like, how do you deal with that? So I think, yeah, I think it's so so interesting to, to look at it from a business lens, right? And, and see, okay, well, we need money coming in, right? <laughs> so how's how's that going to go? So, no, I, I, I and, and I understand that. And I think it's, it's so fascinating to see how organizations. Uh, the way I like to describe it is, when you see a restaurant that survived through COVID, it makes you think how good that restaurant actually was. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like it must have been really good to actually survive COVID. Nobody mm-hmm. going into the restaurant, like mm-hmm. having takeouts only. Man, that you know, it's always a good sign yeah. of a company or an organization, a restaurant that it survived through something as difficult as COVID. So 100%. Um, okay, let me shift back to you a bit um, in terms of, let's talk about challenges because we all know we face challenges on a daily basis. Um, and so I think specifically for you, just kind of talking to you and seeing your outlook on life in, you know, even professionally, like I think it's very interesting. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you've experienced because this is going to be interesting for me to kind of hear now because you seem so like positive and you have you ha- you seem to have a solution for things right so i want to know i try <laughs> i want to know some of the challenges that you've encountered and of course. i guess how have you overcome them like and, and how has that impacted not who you are professionally but as swati as a person yeah for sure happy to share um, there are several, but I think I'll. Uh, <laughs> Please, go all the time. I'll, I'll pick a couple or maybe a few that I will share with you. So, yeah. um, looking back, career journey, I've already shared with you sure. my um, journey yeah. so far. Um, you know, um, biases, I think, is one of the key things that all of us uh, deal with day in and day out. Yep. It's something you don't want to handle, but you can't really get away from it. Yep. Um, whether be it at an individual level yes. or more broadly. So um, having worked in different cultures, different regions and et cetera, I think for me, one of the key learnings was biases such as gender biases, right. this culture yes. biases, and even age. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, like even my parents got me into school yeah. earlier than what I should. Yeah. <laughs> so I was often the youngest in the group. Yeah. And, uh, um, I find, um, you know, me being the youngest amongst my peers as well, sometimes it's kind of in your mind, yeah. like, okay, so how am I dealing with the situation yeah, of and course. Um, how am I coming across? So these are some of the questions that I think we all just talk yeah. in our heads. Um, but overcoming that is going to be key to kind of look at, well, everybody is going to be talking in their head. Yes. So let's focus on the matter. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> Knowledge and trust and relationships yep. and getting the job done. Yep. I kind of tend to put that into those categories. And what's crucial is um, really kind of understanding that, yes, people are going to have different perspectives and uh, backgrounds are different. Mm. Um, You know, I talked a little bit about the culture and the gender biases. Again, different regions, different cultures. It's just ingrained in the culture. So knowing that helps to navigate through those challenges. Um, so let me talk about the relationship sh- uh, yeah. side a little bit, you know, um, having done the different roles and uh, roles such as where you're handling a transformation project, dealing with executives and yeah. different levels and, you know, teams that are not really reporting into you, but you got to manage and get the job done. Yeah. What's crucial there is the relationship aspect and the trust. Yeah. Um, and I'll point back to, you know, when I took on the um, uh, role as the leader for the check manufacturing. Um, average tenure in there was nearly about 25 years. So uh, again, crucial as a new leader coming in, how do you gain the trust? Um, Because oftentimes people are, again, not very comfortable with change. And every time there's a leadership change, uh, people do expect that things are not going to be the same and some of the status quo is going to be challenged and et cetera. So really working to develop those relationships and trust. Um, It's not easy, but it's absolutely something that does help yeah. in the long run. 
Um, and I'm so proud, like when I got into the Czech business, they were, um, the team is very well set, lots yeah. of great people, lots of great knowledge and talent and et cetera, but helping channel that to yes. get the best outcome for not just our employees, but the business and the customers is also crucial. And oftentimes as leaders, um, you know, one of the key things I will say is as we keep navigating through the business changes yeah. and et cetera, um, looking into identifying talent mm. and really developing talent is going to be crucial because mm. you want to create the leaders that yeah. can actually transcend the positive impact through the organization, in the community, globally, and you can't be there everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. how do you create that? Yeah. And how do you have the leaders kind of transcend that yeah. further is going to be so important. But with that, the flip side is also that you have to be able to make some tough calls, yeah. which is not easy, it's challenging, but yeah. um, um, you know, identifying where and how and how quickly you need to make those decisions are yeah. also important to manage the business side of things. And when you mentioned like, you know, people who've been here for 25 years or whatever it is, that in itself, I can't imagine, like, if you're so set on the way things are, and you have someone who's brand new to the company or even brand new to the, to the you know, the to organization, the to the and, team, yeah. yeah, like, I can imagine how difficult or, or I'm not use the word volatile, but like how difficult that situation could be yeah. to even be welcomed, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, like I can't imagine that was a, <laughs> that was an easy easy uh, a, a task that you were that you were given. So let's talk about Finestra for a second. So I'm not going to talk about how great Finestra is again. Like I think I did that in in one of the previous <laughs> episodes. So that's fine, but I want to know from from your perspective, right? So first, let's talk about. If you were describing Finastra to, to to someone who, who doesn't know Finastra, is mm -hmm. what would you say is like the unique selling point of this place? I would say the unique selling point is the people, yeah. the culture, and the opportunities. And here's why I would say that. Yeah. I've been here for seven years and I've seen the organization evolve. Yes. And I will say that the employee engagement and the care for people yeah. over these even just last seven years, despite all of the changes with yeah. respect to org structure and you know leadership and et cetera, we're fortunate enough that the senior leadership, um, you know, all the way from Simon and the rest of the yeah. ELT and et cetera, um, the changes that they have brought kind of speaks to the care for people. Yeah. And it's, it's by leaps and bounds over yeah. the years that we have continued to do more yeah. and engage people more. Um, so when you talk about the culture, I mean, I'm sure you've heard about and seen some of the comments and the videos and et cetera that yeah. we have been propagating through Finastra and even yeah. to the outside world in terms of we've got people who are doing their second innings at Finastra. Yeah. That speaks something. Yeah. We have people who leave for good reasons. You know, life yeah. has to go on. Yeah, of course. But they become ambassadors of Finastra. Yeah. That speaks a lot. Yeah. Our culture is, um, you know, I should say so um, contagious that... <laughs> You tend to kind of, just to your uh, point about, you know, you meet new people, yeah. it's new roles, it's changes, but it keeps you going, it gives you the opportunities. Yeah. And just within my team, like when I talk about my services and support organizations, right. um, the average tenure in that team is close to about 15 years, <laughs> right? So that, that again speaks volumes yeah. about why people stay with Finastra. Yeah. Um, it's because of the environment, the culture, and uh, the organic growth, yeah. like the preference in terms of developing talent, yeah. investing in skills, yeah. and really giving the opportunities to our people to shine and grow is, yeah. I think, a unique selling point. I think that is a really great way to describe it, 100%. I think the the people, I think, is... is having the right people in a team is so important. I think having the right people alongside you, knowing that you have the right backup when you need it is so important. And I think, yeah, 100%, I agree. Um, that's just one of the things, yeah, people definitely about Finastra. Um, okay, why should you, why do you think people should work here? I think they should work for the same reasons. <laughs> it's a fantastic company to work for. Come work for Finastra. <laughs> okay. Um, so last few questions. Sure. Closing questions. Uh, these are all about you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it could get deep here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some advice that you would give to a young you. I would say anything is possible, which has been quite true for yeah. me. 
Um, so being open to change and just kind of going with the flow because a plan is a plan, but yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. you things can happen. never, yeah, things yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. However, I will say, don't wait for life to happen to you. Yeah. Take the risk, don't be afraid to fail, yeah. and just keep moving yeah. forward. That's yeah. the advice that I would give. What is one thing you wish you knew before embarking on your journey? Um, I wish there was a crystal ball to exactly know how things go, but yeah. that's not the case. Um, so I think I'll answer that a little bit differently to say, I think the one thing that I wish I knew or I would want to continue doing is don't give up. Nice. Not to give up because um, things happen, you know, life happens. Yeah. Don't wait for life to happen to you. All the good things we've talked about on this podcast, um, but I would say be impatient yes. and keep pushing the bounds. Yes, 100%. And finally, if there's one thing people should know about you, what would that be? So my motto is leave the people and the organization in a better place than I found it. Um, so I think the one takeaway that I will say is um, for people to know that I care. Yeah. I care about the team. I care about our customers and I care about our business. Thank you so much, Swati. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on this podcast. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to the next time we talk. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much to Swati for giving us a glimpse into her career, who she is and, and really what makes her tick. Personally, the advice that she gives right there at the end is what stuck with me the most. Not waiting for life to happen, not giving up and not being afraid to fail. I think we're all afraid of failing so much that we often forget that sometimes all we need is to tell ourselves to take action. So thank you for joining us for this episode of Life at Fenestra. It's been a pleasure being your host and I can't wait for you to join us in the next episode. I've been Gurren and thanks again for listening. <laughs>